I'm Luke Demetov, born on 3rd of March, 1926. My first memory, my dad passed away. I was four years old. They had me go down and visit him in the hospital. And um, I stayed at home with his mother. And there was four of us. I guess she had to make a decision, couldn't feed us. And there was no money, no work those days. So I was in the mission until about 1936. I'm Alice Withrow Dementif. I was born on the Nushigak River, August 19, 1932. I remember my mother trying to talk to us in native because that's what she knew. And my dad would tell her to uh, talk in English. He was an Englishman. Most of the time we were moving to wherever there was food for our parents to get. My dad used to cook for us and bake. He took care of us kids. My mom, I remember she was always in bed. She had tuberculosis. 1943 in August, I think she passed away. Our dad got the job. He was a radio operator, uh, war down in the Aleutians. He couldn't take care of us, so he brought us up to the mission. Then he was uh, moved to Bettles. After three, four years, he met someone else and married her, and he lived up there the rest of his life. Being in the mission, they were very strict. They called us by the numbers, gave us a number, get in line to uh, go to church, and get in line to go over breakfast. We sawed a lot of wood with a two-man saw, and besides swinging the axe, and uh, the rest of the time was either school or cleaning up the building and no play. I always looked forward to the people in the village because they did all the hunting, trapping, and so on, you know, and I really envied them. I thought when I get old enough, that's just what I was going to do, yeah. When I first went to the mission, they put me in first grade, and I was nine years old. I had a hard time. I was maybe because I started too late or something. We had strict teachers. They'd have a subject, and if everybody didn't remember that subject in that one hour, they kept going the whole day until you knew it, till every one of us knew it. There was a lot of different kids, but most of them were like from the coast. You know, they had that big epidemic, and a lot of the people died and there was kids that were orphans, and the priests, they'd gather these kids and bring them up here. And you know, none could speak English, couldn't understand. I got a job rolling oil barrels into the barge for a day navigation out across here about four miles called Railroad City. I was 14 years old and the owner, I told him I could handle it just as good or better than the, his crew. So he tried me and so I worked uh, 48 hours straight, dollar an hour, and them days were no paper money. It's all silver dollars. So I had to uh, put them in my pocket. They were pretty heavy and come over <laughs> this way. <laughs> that was my first job. I got a job on a steamer in Anna, delivering freight and loading on wood to burn. It burnt uh, a cord of wood an hour. Then after that, 
I uh, was called in the Army. They wanted sharpshooters during uh, World War II. Well, in the mission, we'd sew. Go in the sewing room and sew all day, you know, at different things. We made quilts, we patched clothes. We used to have carnivals and they had all kinds of food and games and everything, you know. That's when I spotted him and he spotted me, one of the two. <laughs> the nuns, they didn't like that because they had nothing to do with service boys. They're no good. They'd have dances and we'd dance like this, that far apart. <laughs> In January, he was leaving for a trap line. And I knew when his dog team was passing, and I ran down the road, I snuck down there, really. And uh, gave him a hug, and, and then the next summer, August, we got married. I had built a house. That's about all we had. There was no work, no money floating around. You just had to get to hunting, trapping, to uh, make a living. Ivan Edwards, I learned a lot from him. We stay out three months trapping. At Dykeman, that's the only I did around the river, about 120 miles from here. And uh, then were very cold days, and, and the 60 below. You snowshoe all day, you work up a lot of sweat. Breaking trail ahead of the dogs because they're pulling the load in them. So we just wash up in the snow, just, and rub snow all over you and wash that sweat off. And then dry yourself with your shirt and put it on, then you feel good. No time to lose, we took off for a muskrat camp. And I stayed at home. I'm always busy sewing. I used to recover down parkies for people. I used to tan furs. We made uh, wolf mucklucks and beaver mitts. He got little jobs here and there. He had to make a little money because he had kids to feed. And that's one thing the kids never went without was food. He would catch king salmon and put up fish. And the kids, we all worked at it. We just lived on what we had. We had moved to Bethel to find work because there was no work up here. The construction worker wanted carpenters. And uh, that's what he did, you know. He built our home, he built the cabinets in the house and everything. And um, they told him, we'll show up in the morning. And he'd been working since then. He built the schools down there in Bethel and all the kids went to that school. I worked for um, MK. They were building the Air Force site. That was... Uh, Pretty hard then, we were working 7-12s. No vacation for me. <laughs> we had big gardens. We had a big potato patch. They told us you can't plant gardens on the tundra. He said, well, I'll show you. So we got the moss off, cleaned it up, tilled it up, only so much dirt. We had a thousand pounds of potatoes that fall. And the kids, we all worked at it, you know, because he was out working all the time. Yeah. But he always said he was going to move back up here because this is his home, born and raised here. We moved back up here in 74. And he'd bring those boys on his jobs. They were trained good too, and they built um, office building, people's homes in different places. The corporation building and the 
and the city hall and the uh, uh, school workshop or the lodge also. The first snow machines we had were Nordics. They looked identical. So we got signs like they put on bathroom doors, ladies and men's. So they put that on our snow machine. <laughs> There's one time I'll never forget is when we sigh washed out. Well, we started off about nine in the morning from our cabin at the lake. No tent, no sleeping bags, no nothing. We kept going and then it starts snowing and fog. You couldn't see. He said, well, we'll find a place to make fire and, you know. And I remembered I had brought his bare booties I made that fit over his snow machine boots. And uh, so we took those out and sat on them. You ever get stuck out in the cold, make sure you have bare skin. You can't find anything warmer. During the night, he was telling me, gee, this reminds me of my young day. I said, you can have your young day. <laughs> he always tells me, you wanted to argue even out in the middle of the cold. <laughs> Everywhere and anywhere, I followed him. Well, I got a story about the ghost I seen. We are going beaver trapping on the uh, Iditarod Flats. We are following a trail, so we caught up with the guy he had the rope around his shoulder, walk snowshoeing, and pulling with his dogs, pulling his sled. He was in his 80s, I guess. And so we asked him uh, where to go. We want to know where the mouth of Yetna is. He talked in his language, and I watched his hands, and going like that, it's a river. And this is portage, you know. I said, I'll snowshoe for you. And he had a big smile on him, yeah. So we went ahead. A lot of wolves there. I had the, uh, two dogs. And they were so scared that uh, they jump on my sleeping bag and they you could feel them just shiver and the wolves wanted them. So anyway, it took me five and a half days to go 90 miles, you know. He is from Holikachuk. A few years later, I went back and uh, snowshoed again. And on the way, there was a big, huge otter. So I got the otter. That was good. I kept it going another couple of miles, and I see this dog team. There's about four inches of loose snow. There was no trail at all, you know. And then I see where he went down the river. So I went down the river, and still no trail. I tried to catch his attention, he didn't bother, so I whistled and hollered, and, and I watched my dogs, uh, their ears, you know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't hear nothing. So I stopped. From there I told uh, some old guys that what I seen, and they knew right away it was a ghost, you know. They asked me if I'm all right, so it's their way. Yeah, I'm okay. So early in the morning, I took off for uh, Shagluck. There was another old guy that, that I knew. He called me and he says, are you okay? You're all right, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Why do you ask me? He says, yeah, I hear. I hear what you see. The news got there before I did, you know. <laughs> How, I don't know, there was no radios but they knew and got to thinking after that um, old timer that I snowshoed for, he was showing me the way. See, he died, uh, I read him in 49, and he died in 
uh, late 1950, and I made that trip in 52. I was on my way home, and there he was showing me the way. He sent that otter purposely in front of me, so it's good luck, you know. That all that country is, uh, that's Indian country. They hunted all through there. And uh, gotta have respect for whatever you do. So that's how I feel about whatever area you go, there's somebody been there before you, you know. And uh, just take care, and he'll take care of you too. The kids nowadays, if they would be busy like that, just doing anything, you know, it's simple things, but just keep busy. <laughs> I used to row, you know, back in the 30s, a rowboat all over. And we went to row to Reindeer Lake and pick berries and swore that someday I'm going to build there. And this land claim came up, so I applied for it. And, and then I started building. I got a living quarters there and I got a, I got a shop there and steam bath house. And, the best little outhouse in the country. You know, I, I'm not one to uh, say too much to anybody, but uh, the way I work things is uh, I just keep working, make a showing, make progress, and they see what I do. And that's, I think that's worth a lot of words. So, keep working. <laughs>